So next up, we have Jürgen Lumera, Director, TIS Product Management and Innovation, Bosch, Automotive, or sorry, Automotive Service Solutions. Okay, so something I figured out yesterday that either I filed the title wrongly or they changed it because originally the title was a question, is they are the future of technical documentation and somebody already made the end of my presentation, it is. So, but I, anyhow, I keep it that way. Um, it was triggered by an article uh, Alan Brennan wrote in 2009. He stated, he analyzed a couple of uh, AR applications and, and uh, gave the University of Columbia examples and that is a question, is AR the future of technical documentation? He didn't give an answer at that time. He just discussed different aspects. We thought a year ago, when it's worth to ask this question again. The, and our general observation was at that time it's, AR is 20 years in the field already. It has named as the future technology a couple of times. It always these waves, but it didn't promise or didn't fulfill that promise. And why would we ask right now that question? What has changed? This is not the same as it was 20 years ago. We think it's more industrial applications and real user benefit out. So that's worth to ask this again. Consumer technology makes AR accessible to everybody. So something has changed since he asked that question. Is AR mature enough? It's something we need to figure out. Um, and what is missing for technical documentation to make it the future of technical documentation? Usage for technical documentation, I would like to show you a couple of examples before we come to a conclusion say, okay, this is what we see technical documentation can use AR or has to use AR that you really come to the conclusion that this is the future of technical documentation. The next slide is something I, I'm pretty sure you have not seen normally in this application or in this type of presentations because it's a business case. So because I, I tell you, whatever we do right now is following these two arrows here because we cannot sell anything, either not taking the documentation if I cannot decrease cost or increase revenue. So these are the two drivers for us, for Bosch as an application in the workshop or in the after sales. By decreased cost, is training visualized complex information, not a standard information, not an exchange of a trivial thing a technician would never use a normal technical documentation. Context specific information, things he's normally searching for over a long time, or increased revenue, showroom interaction, accessory sales, etc., like stuff. Awareness product. We focus here, increase efficiency and quality. That's why technical documentation will benefit from AR. What are cases where AR could help technical documentation? We think it's difficult to repair cases. Difficult to repair, not a trivial case. This here is really augmented, will repair information for difficult complex repair procedures. The engineer will execute a guided repair. So it's a totally different term. The ones of you who know diagnostic, it's guided diagnostic. We think it will be in the future a guided repair because I guide somebody through it. But whenever I guide somebody, there needs a reason for it, not, not stupid or simple things. Application will indicate where repair has to happen, where it takes place. Application can align with the current process. So I start later in my uh, repair project than you normally do, because I just repair, repair, repair. I cannot continue, normally I open my book or, or search Google or watch a video. Now I hold my camera into it, it's catching up with the situation, it's going forward. Difficult to repair information because this is the cases where a technician would use service information or AR. And that's where AR can really, really help. Augment wire harness. This is just an example for the automotive. The most complex thing for each technician in the workshop is not exchanging a light bulb, it's finding these wire harness. The diagnostic system is telling him, hey, here's a, a connector, measure pin one and five. Where the hell is this connector in my vehicle? It's behind the dashboard. What do I have to remove? Or a, a side cover or it's in the seat. So augmenting a wire harness is a very good example and stands for everything what you cannot see. And it's hard for a technician to access for every industry or any industry. Matter. Diagnostic information. So a technician, no technician in an automotive world can live without diagnostic. It's the first thing he's executing. He's connecting his diagnostic system, fetching out data, and then he needs to get this visualized. 
And now in combination with the two previous steps, I want to show him an, an wire harness. I want to show where to measure it, what service information is available, how can I quickly do the things. I augment all the other stuff. So what we have here is three examples a technician has to use, cases which we described. Why would you use it? Five minutes? And I go forward. Advantages for technical documentation. <laughs> Uh, increase efficiency and accuracy of the accessing a vehicle. Information adjusted to the place where I need it and when I need it. Minimize the service errors because I don't remove stuff which I don't have to remove. I see the things the way I should see it because they are there. It's just covered by something. Reuse of existing engineering data. Everybody has this engineering data but nobody is really make good reuse of it or usage of it. Leverage ready available consumer technology. I don't need any more high-end devices. I can use a tablet. Maybe not the ideal case for a workshop, a rough environment, but it would work. Applicable to various OE departments because if you start in the uh, after sales department, you can use the same data, same software, same application in production in um, design, in, 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 whatever, because it's the same data, I just use it for different purposes. What has changed? Now, getting back to the original question, um, since he has asked that question, is it the future? With technology has improved, better algorithms. Man, this this edge-based tracking is much better than whatever had, we had before. Increased performance of the devices and the algorithms. Uh, the AR or AR authoring tools, more suppliers of AR technology in general, that much more market is there, demand and suppliers. Consumer technology is now ready. I have mobile phones, tablets, I have a Kinect in my um, living room and I can use it for this. Why should I not put it into a workshop and, and track whatever happens there? Goggles are available, Siri-like voice control. All of this is changing and makes this much more attractive for uh, technical technician and technical service information. And advanced applications for AR in place. Navigation systems, what we've just seen before, catalogs, search engines, etc. It's a tremendously changed since the last time you asked the question. Therefore, now again, is this the future? When you know it from a title, it is the future because AR is ready and in use. It is really, when look outside how many applications you find, come to our booth and you see things we did, really complex uh, repair procedures in it, like wire harness, etc. Devices are at the end users. Experience in a daily life, like the IKEA catalog. You open it and you see your daily life, everybody's expecting it. That there will be technicians demanding this technology because they're using it in every day's uh, business. Open an IKEA catalog or order something and place it somewhere. Authoring tools available, cost reduction in technical information and training because I can use reach cost reduction. And you remember this was the slide, I only can sell the things and I, this will be the future if I can reduce cost. And I will reduce cost because I eliminate unnecessary work. I, I can even allow somebody who's not trained to execute something now on demand, wherever he is, training can be handled remote, etc. Therefore the answer is yes. But what is open, and I think we have an answer for, this is the only time where I refer to our product, Build knowledge and process to do it in mass production because AR currently is isolated silos. I implement something and then I implement the next application. We, Bosch, work on a framework to industrialize, to bring AR to the masses. That an OEM can come to us and say, hey, I want to do it for my 20 models in 27 languages in 50 countries around the world. I want to manage it the same way as all the other service information I already manage. And then AR is successful in context of technical documentation. Thank you. Questions for Jürgen. Hi. Um, is this a service you're delivering to your, your customers or orthogonal industries, or is this for public relations? It's all, it's all good. Uh, it's not for public relations. So we um, currently, you can uh, come here, you see, get more information in our booth. It's, we built a proof of concept right now to see how it fits into uh, the OEM's environment, how you can develop it, what we need to change. But it, this is a service, a software, and uh, data. And you can, we sell every, all the three things, but preferable we give you a piece of software and you integrate it into your environment. For, for all customers. Okay, 
all cost aspect. Other industries. Well, oil industry, we know we have very high interest currently because they have the problem in, in these um, oil rigs, repair them remotely, all of that. So. Okay, so what is your experience with your customers in getting the whole 3D data of an industrial product? And the OEMs have the 3D data. The problem here is it's too rich. Typically, because with the 3D data we get out of a team center may has production information you don't need. So therefore, we typically implement in team center export procedures that you just get the bare bones you need in the following processes. A lot of OEMs already have this because they, they're developing animations. And developing an animation is not so far away from developing an augmented piece. The difference is in an animation is the whole vehicle, vehicle there. In an augmentation is just the piece you focusing on there, but the but, basic is the same. But isn't it in the in the augmentation you uh, then you know all the technic all the technical parts, right? Whereas in an animation you do not. No, I, I don't know why is this different. Because the technical parts are sometimes secret and uh, very well saved. So I thought maybe you got problems in getting. No, those I mean, data. you you don't hand over the three D data that you can reproduce the. Uh, the uh, data. No, no, but this is, you, you cannot access this data. It's very primitive. When you render it on a client side, it has so low polygons okay. that you cannot do anything with it. Okay, and then the other question, sure. and then I'm done. <laughs> um, the other question, um, but do you have eno enough data? Well, no, you did show that you have enough data to show the people who repair the cars where the problem is, mm -hmm. right? Um, so could you, did you think about having an an AR system at the end of production that uh, on its own takes a look in every other hundred car or something um, if everything is built up correctly or if there is some material built in wrong or maybe damaged? Uh, we have discussions with production lines, um, training mainly, and um, on different uh, end of line would be an example. So when you either do quality checking during the installation or you do it end of line and then you provide quick enough information to fix these problems. So there's a diagnostic system at the end of the line. You read out the diagnostic information. Then you visualize these problems and then you help somebody quickly fixing it. I need to typically it's a connector is not really connected to or a wire is broken. So different, a different repair procedure than what you normally see in the workshop. Because you have not to fix a problem, you have to fix a quality um, case. But we, we are in contact with quite a lot because this is actually easier to deploy because you have controlled lighting environment, um, less data, less variances. So, absolutely. Um, two questions. Uh, I know you mentioned it's proof of concept. Oh, thank you. <laughs> no problem. But what's your pricing model for this? And if you don't have that yet, what do you think it'll be? And the second question, beyond automotive, what do you think the industries are that would uh, most readily adopt? Okay, for the pricing model, I ask you to come to our booth. <laughs> <laughs> um, currently, I would say it's the oil industry because we, we, we did not expect this. So the interest is pretty uh, big. Uh, we know chemistry is very interested in this. Uh, but of course, the perfect fit is automotive and transportation in a wider space. So whatever has four wheels, has an engine in it, because th this, this is stuff, you have a diagnostic system, and it works all in a very, very similar way. But the oil industry is, beside uh, transportation, in our mind, currently the one who's jumping the, f the quickest onto that. That's about all the time we have questions for. Uh, question, yeah. Thank you very much, Marcus. Next up, we have... Uh,